I'm going to ask three people who've never met me, stick up your hand, and if you've never met me, but if you have some idea of who, of who I am, um, just kind of tell us who I am. Somebody who I've never actually shaken hands with. Okay, back there. All right, I'm someone on Twitter. Somebody else that I've never met, but who may be online and have some sense of who I am over here. A big supporter of the industry, and you organize the uh, Tuesday events that I can never seem to make. Okay, a supporter of the industry and Third Tuesday. One more person who I've never met, but may have come across me online. Yes? Okay, so an online presence and I'm supportive of, of other people that uh, I work with. Now, there's some people in this room that I've worked with and who actually know me. Um, somebody who's actually worked with me and knows me and pull no punches, um, stick up your hand and tell people who I really am. Where's David Jones when I need him? Wallace, are you, are you here? Okay, just describe me based on knowing me. <laughs> in 140 characters. Uh, Will Morley is a uh, founder of Morley Wallace, a uh, PR firm, big into social media, uh, came this close to a PhD in political science, he used to work on Carlton Hill, uh, and is uh, a good and honest guy. Thank you. <laughs> a good and honest guy, that's the one I'll repeat. Here's the purpose of this. What didn't come out is this guy. Anybody know who he is? Yes, I do. Pierre Trudeau. Now when I was 15 years old, a boy scout, honest to God, in Kitchener, Waterloo, my scout master was a liberal and he took me to the 1968 Liberal Leadership Convention. And I spent the better part of 35 years of my life involved in politics. That's who I was for 35 years. And during that time, I supported this woman in taking a run and getting 10% of the votes against that man, and we all know how that turned out. <laughs> Others defined me during that period of time. People who defined me was when I was a young liberal president and naive, I went to a convention in 1978 in Ottawa, and Doug Small, who was then with CP, tracked me down in the middle of the night and said, you guys just uh, put forward a resolution to the young liberals to decriminalize marijuana. You must do it because you smoke marijuana. And I, being a smartass, said to him, Ah, oh, Doug, I wouldn't want my mother to know. Next morning, the Kitchener record hits the stands, and I'm not kidding you, the, he the headline on the front page was, Young liberal president, local student, admits to smoking marijuana. And that happened to me several times during, uh, during my career in politics. There were always other people who would define who I was, and I'd read about it, and I'd sit there, and I'd curse at the paper in the morning because I'd say, that's not who I am, that's not true, or I'd shake my fist at Peter Mansbridge at night and say, that's not true, that's not who I am. But others were defining who I was, and at the end of the day, I wasn't very happy about that. It really didn't feel all that great. And along the way, thanks to what Paul Martin did for me, uh, I had a chance to pursue new interests. And that's where I discovered social media. Now, what had been happening for me during politics in the pre-social media period is that my reputation was based upon eye contact with people. It was based upon the people I met in smoke-filled back rooms, the telephone calls I made to journalists who would then report what I had to say, um, or it would then be based upon what would happen in the news media. And the problem with the news media, as we all know, is it's one way. I really didn't have any other recourse, any other voice once it hit the airwaves or once it hit the media, other than to simply complain. And then, I discovered RSS feeds, and I discovered, at that point it was uh, NewsGator, but then I quickly switched to Google Reader, and I discovered that, without any need to code, I had my own barrel of ink. I had WordPress, and I could set up a blog, and I could be heard. 
I could have a voice. And I could speak back to all those other people. I could take control of who I was. And that led me to the happy situation where today, if I go and I look for, if I Google myself and I see who is Joe Thornley, with the exception of our speaker at Third Tuesday tonight, I hope you will all stay, um, with the exception of one in the top ten, which is a Mitch Joel post, I get to define who I am in every other respect. And there are lots of Joe Thornleys and Joseph Thornleys out there, but I keep on popping up and it's the stuff that I do. And that makes me happy. Now, when Michael said to me, personal brand camp, I have to admit, I said to him, can you send me some writing? Because I, like many of you, am online, and I really don't think of a personal brand. I just think of me. And if there's anything that, as I was approaching this, that I have been consistently impressed with since I began publishing is that every day when I'm online, it's a chance for me to look in the mirror and to see what kind of person I really am. It's not a marketing contrivance. That's fake. It's not a game. It's just me. And I'm kind of happy with where I am because I seem to have a positive, uh, a positive presence out there. People will talk to me at events. Nobody can come across the street to avoid me as they did when I was in politics. Uh, and nobody's tried to take a, a punch at me for a while. 